Reverse projection is a type of photogrammetry, in other words, a type of uh, uh, methodology to calculate positions, measurements, and distances within a video image. In this case, we're going to be utilizing 3D point clouds to perform that process. Reverse projection is a technique that involves taking video evidence, overlaying it on top of a 3D point cloud, and then dissolving back and forth between the image on top and the 3D data on the background to then project through the image and measure positions. Reverse projection involves three primary steps. The first step is to calibrate the images. Most of the surveillance video images that are being collected today include lens distortion that is in non-linear format, and I'll talk about what that means on a later slide. That data needs to be calibrated relative to the accurate 3D background. Then the data is overlaid on top of the 3D background, and then ultimately we can measure through the image. I'm going to show a very quick example here of what this looks like on a simple case. Here what we have is an original video file from a CCTV camera system. And what you'll notice is that the background data, like along the sidewalk here, is a curved area. In reality, this sidewalk is a straight line, but the lens distorts the image and causes the curvature that you see here. What's unique about surveillance systems is that the lens distortion is typically non-linear. In other words, we're not dealing with a direct linear translation uh, and, and linear curvature inside of the image. The reason for that has a number of causes, things like the dome of the lens, is not going to be manufactured in a perfectly spherical way. Oftentimes there are smudges on the, on the lens that will change the relationship of where an object appears, and a number of other factors that cause some challenges when trying to correct this data. The first step, which we'll show again how to do this on a later slide, is to correct that lens distortion, to create straight lines from objects that were, current, were previously curved. Once we've corrected that, the next step that we like to perform is to crop out the edges simply to provide a rectangular image that is easier to look at. The outer edges of the uh, image are going to have a higher amount of error, and if they are not relevant to the case at hand, it provides a much easier view to crop that data out and rely upon the area that is of interest. Once that's been done, we can bring in our three-dimensional point cloud behind the image, and now we can dissolve back and forth between our overlaid image and the background data. The benefit here is that if there is recorded imagery on our surveillance footage that is not present in our 3D background, we can now measure those objects with ease. For example, here's an image of a vehicle driving from left to right across the image, and if we want to measure the position of this vehicle, we can bring our mouse to the area of the tire, project through the image, and mark a position in 3D. Now we can play forward in the image to another point in time, and then we can do the same process here of projecting through the image, marking that position of the tire, and now we have a distance that the vehicle has traveled between the position one and position two, which in this case is about 9.38 feet. Now that was a bit of an oversimplification of the process at hand, but it was a hopeful uh, foundation that we can set here before we go through the next examples that will, I hope, um, provide clarity onto how powerful this technique can be.